<laughs> Thank you. I have been walking through challenging environments my whole life. My father was a United States Army colonel, and my mother elected to give up her career to accompany him around the world, literally. I was the youngest of three children, the only girl, and my brothers would often say that I was spoiled rotten. I, as a family, we spent 10 years in Asia, six years in Thailand during the Vietnam War, two years in Taipei during the American Army drawdown, and, three, and two years in um, South Korea. During that time, President Park of South Korea was assassinated, and martial law was imposed. My home life was just as challenging as living overseas. My brothers were often my friends, not always by choice, but because there was no other girls my age in the neighborhood. So, my, so they were forced to play with me by decree of my mother. Since living overseas, we did not have American television, we had to create our own entertainment. So we would play the, we would play the typical game of, let's see who could hit the softest. So, <laughs> so I, would, I would give my brother a little tap on the shoulder, and he would haul back and punch me as hard as he could. Or I would try to punch him as hard as I could. He could always hit harder, and I always lost one way or another. Or they would rake fall leaves together around a fire hydrant, unbeknownst to me, and have me jump into it. <laughs> so, Another game that my brother perfected was to sit on me and dribble saliva out of his mouth onto me. Well, one day, the saliva got a little too bottom heavy, and he couldn't suck it back up into his mouth. It fell into my parted, screaming lips. I washed my own mouth out with soap and water that day. I didn't know it then that my torturous childhood and being the only girl on the block would prepare me for my chosen career in life. But for that, I will always be grateful for my brothers. <laughs> we continued to move, and I went to three different high schools, and I eventually graduated from Washington State University, go Cougs, with a, <laughs> with a um, degree in communications public relations. Now, I often say that I'm selling jail. So, I also grew up making puzzles with my mother, the type of puzzles that you would spread all over your dining room table, and uh, we would all sit there and do it. Well, one year, my brother gave me a um, puzzle with at least 101 cat heads and a bottle of aspirin. Now, I'm not a cat fan, but I finished that puzzle in three days, and I didn't need the aspirin. So. I love puzzles. We also, as a family, would watch, watch the 1970 mystery series Ellery Queen on television. And so I loved it when the main character, Ellery Queen, played by actor Jim Hutton, would turn to the audience, lay out all the suspects, the, um, the alibis, and what was going on, and say, who do you think did it? And so then the show would cut to a commercial break. As a family, we would discuss it and figure out, and even take bets on who did it. I wasn't half bad for an 11-year-old kid, but I soon, real I soon, soon learned that real TV was not reality, that you could not solve a crime in um, an hour. Okay, my last semester at WSU, um, the Naval Investigative Service, who have subsequently changed their name to NCIS, like the TV show, was um, coming to the university and they were asking for a job um, for special agents. So I called my father, who was then a retired United States Army colonel, and asked him, Dad, what is NIS about? He told me they were a civilian organization conducting felony level criminal investigations within the Department of the Navy. They carry guns and they travel the world. I applied for a position, but it took me two and a half years before I was hired. Like any bureaucracy, it took that long. That was due to lost paperwork and um, a government um, hiring freeze and a government shutdown. So I should have figured out then that uh, it was going to shut down. So, um, however, once hired, I went to our federal. I went to our academy at the Federal Law Enforcement Training Center in Brunswick, Georgia. The locals there would call us federal federal cops, flea ticks. Our academy was four months long of general crime investigations, where we learned how to um, interview people, conduct interrogations, serve search warrants, um, do arrests, and process crime scenes. We also learned how to shoot with various weapons. We took several driving courses and self-defense classes. It was a blast. <laughs> mm. 
We also learned how to write reports, reports, and more reports than this way. I have subsequently learned that our reports are read by um, Congress and the White House whenever there's an overhaul of military um, investigations or there's a special interest inquiry into one of our cases. Needless to say, spell check has become my best friend. <laughs> As an NCI special agent, we also have to learn the United States federal criminal codes, the various state codes and statutes, depending on what state we're living in at the time, and then also the Uniform Code of Military Justice, which applies to all um, military, active duty military personnel throughout the world. Since graduating from the academy, I have worked mostly general crime investigations involving um, fraud, forgery, drug cases, uh, sexual assaults, family violence, death investigations, and cold case homicides. Overseas, I work mostly force protection issues and ship visits. During my career, I have lived in um, San Diego, California, uh, Roosevelt Road, Puerto Rico, been assigned to our headquarters in Washington, DC, lived in Rota, Spain, and now I'm assigned to Woodby Island, Washington. I have literally traveled the world, been to the Azores, the US and British Virgin Isles, uh, Bahrain, um, Palma de Mallorca, Hawaii, Okinawa, and Japan. Being a female in law enforcement and working within the military, both male-dominated careers could have been a stumbling block for some. But I never looked at it that way. If I wasn't chosen for a particular case or assignment, I saw that as a challenge. I developed some unique skills so that I would be an asset on any case um, or assignment later on down the road. Many times, I was the only female agent in a particular office, like the time I was the only NCIS agent on board a Marine Corps base in Southern California or Puerto Rico. So, I'm sure there was a learning curve for some, but I just acted like it was no big deal, worked solid cases, and I earned their respect. Okay, I cannot explain how the measurements of the bulletproof vest for females got lost three times. <laughs> and we had to be remeasured each time by a male supervisor. <laughs> or how the agent with the short skirt always got the duty call involving the ship visits, where we had to go up and down the ship ladders with Navy officers standing below. You got me there. But I learned to adapt, to overcome, and keep a pair of slacks and flats in my car. Maybe it was my brothers and having grown up in a um, diverse culture, but I never felt discriminated against for being in a female in a male-dominated career or environment. I tried to look be beyond the facade of male, female, black and white, and see what qualities and skills an individual possesses and to learn from them. Since I'm an analytical person, I find that the way that I approach a crime scene is the way that I approach other situations or conflicts in life. This is how I would approach a crime scene. Okay, before I, yes. <laughs> That's not my picture, all right? So. <laughs> before I um, enter a crime scene, I look around, make sure it's secured. If anybody's sick or injured, that they're taken care of mentally and physically that there's nobody hiding behind um, a closed door or under a, a bed. You have to be aware of your surroundings. I try to make sure that I wear protections, the mask, the goggles, the, goody, the boot, boots, the um, gloves, in other words, the bunny suit. I have, been, I have been into some places where you would not want to touch a, th a thing, let alone breathe in the air. So you also have to protect yourself um, mentally. As they say, if your head is not in the game, then you need to leave, okay? I am a strong proponent of mental health days. Also, you wouldn't want me having a bad day and carrying a gun in your office. <laughs> <laughs> there is so much to do at a crime scene. There's the documentation, the photographs, the bagging and the tagging and the collection of evidence that you can't do it alone. You have to get help. You have to work as a team. Teamwork is best. When I step into the crime scene, I look around and I analyze the situation. I am trying to understand what took place and what happened when it happened at the time it happened. I look around to see if there's anything normal or what's not normal, or most importantly, what is not there. 
If I know my victim was murdered with a weapon, then where is the weapon? Or if they drive a car and the car is not in a driveway, where is the car? The details matter when you're there. Before I touch or disturb anything in a crime scene, I assess the situation and I discuss a plan of action with my team. Because once I move something, the crime scene will never be the same. Okay. I am trying to put together a puzzle, a picture of what took place when it happened. The key to a crime scene is the documentation and the preservation of it. The moment I receive the duty call or notification, I start taking detailed notes. At the crime scene, I take videos, photographs, tape it, and sketches. Okay. I am trying to, um, I want to preserve it in a way that I could retrieve that information later on down the road during um, the investigation, during the trial, or 30 years down the road during a, during a um, cold case homicide trial. We have a saying, we used to say is, you get it right the first time. When I'm at a crime scene, I may see something that would want to make me laugh. I'm respectful of my surroundings, but I laugh. Because even during the lowest times of your life or someone else's life, you still have to have a sense of humor and sense of enjoyment of what you're doing or who you were with. Laughter can diffuse a stressful situation. Stress is an everyday occurrence in my life. So we have a saying at the NCIS Cold Case Homicide Unit, when your day ends, my day begins. <laughs> For the past four years, I have been conducting a mock crime scene training for elementary school age kids. Where we set out, we do exercises, we set out um, tables where they learn how to do fingerprint, blood spatter, trace evidence, and they get to practice their skills of observation. Then we move to a mock crime scene where they are the crime scene investigators. And they get to try to figure out what happened, what took place. I want them to ask questions to analyze the situation and look around to see, see what they are seeing. Hopefully, that the lessons they learn from a crime scene, that they'll be able to use later on in life in this changing environment. I joined this over 23 years ago for the adventure and for the travel. Now at the end of my career, I know that I've truly helped people, put some people in jail, but I also know that each day we are given lessons. If you elect not to learn those lessons, then those lessons are going to come right back at you in a different setting or a different format. So I try to learn each lesson each day and learn from it. Thank you.